Welcome everyone to the Chompcast, the official podcast of Sword Chomp and SwordChomp.com. Thank you for downloading or streaming our podcast, taking some time out of your busy life to listen to us. And remember, if you're digging the show, please subscribe and leave us a kind rating. Um, you know, share us with your friends, whatever you can do to help spread the word. It really, it really helps us uh, meet a, a bigger audience. Um, and that's why we do it, to grow the Sword Chomp community. Um, but first, let's introduce the podcra- uh, po- podcasting. Podcasting crew that's here today for our one year anniversary spectacular. I, of course, am your host, Morgan Barnes, broadcasting from Montana. From Michigan, we have Sir Joshua Fowler. How are you doing, Josh? All right. I'm more of a pod crusting guy. But you're a pod cruster? Okay. Yeah. Mm, it's a little more unusual, but I mm-hmm. still love you the way you are, Josh. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, <laughs> you can't do anything about it anyway, so you may as well. <laughs> Once you're committed to the life of pod crusting, there's no turning back. Yeah. Um, glad to have you here, Josh. Uh, our, the brains of the operation, as I say, from Japan. Mr. I watched all the leaked episodes of Game of Thrones before you because I'm a terrible person, Mr. Shay Layton. Hello. Hello. And hello. Glad to have you here, Shay. How Thank you. I'm glad to watch leaked episodes so I can spoil it for everyone. Uh, you're a terrible person, Shay. But you can't wait and watch it with the rest of the world on Sunday. I mean, come on. Come on. Man, I, sh- I should, but you know what? Last night's episode was insane. And that's all I'm going to say. It was... <laughs> Last night? <laughs> as, yeah. <laughs> as if it's on schedule. <laughs> oh, God. So, they they did end that last uh, episode uh, with a nice little scene of seeing all those heroes going off into you know the night. Game of watch. Thrones Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been made into like a thousand memes at this point. Like the A Team, the Avengers. I've seen all those going mm-hmm. around the internet. <laughs> yep. You know what they could have said, which would have been more accurate. It, it, they could have said that would have been more accurate was Mystery Men. I don't know if you guys ever saw that 1999 superheroes movie uh, with Ben Stiller no. and William H. Macy, Hank Azaria. <laughs> and there's going to be one listener out there that's going to be like, oh, I get that Mystery reference. Mystery Men, yeah. Um, but we, we are happy <laughs> to have you here, Shay. Thank you for being here. Me t- Strange me Mystery Men reference and all. We still love you. Um, that's right. <laughs> Uh, and of course, from Texas, a man who celebrated the Sword Chomp one year anniversary with a premium subscription to RedTube. Anthony Fisher, how you doing, Fish? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, feeling I've, good? I've never, never felt so relieved in my life. <laughs> uh, you know, but I was just thinking, you, you got that new subscription to RedTube as to celebrate, but. After the first seven-day free trial, I know you're just going to cancel it, because that's what you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm a cheap ass. I get my seven days of free trial, and uh, I just <laughs> <laughs> quickly cancel that subscription. You're, would, would it be fair to say that you're a cheap ass for some cheap ass? <laughs> uh, yes. Wait, a foursome of cheap ass? Is that what you said? <laughs> would it be fair to say... <laughs> That he is a cheap ass for some cheap ass. <laughs> uh, either way, it, it all works. It all works. We're glad to have you here, Fish. Um, you excited? Excited for the one-year anniversary show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe it's been, you know, one year since we started. Man. Like, I I think this is, is this episode 52, I believe? Yeah. Weirdly enough, yeah. we didn't do our anniversary show on the 50th because we were having so many guests, but uh, I believe this is... Might even be 53. Josh, you know this. You do all the, the, the hard work on the show here. What episode are we on? We don't even know what fucking episode we're <laughs> it, it would be 53, seeing as there are, you know, the 52 weeks in a year. But, uh... Oh. Then again, I'm not gonna... We're not gonna... We're not gonna expect you to know that at this point. I'm still working on time zones with you. Yeah, um, I still need once time we, zones. I, mean, yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> I was just gonna say that. We're, we're doing multiplication <laughs> tables after that. I'm not gonna worry... <laughs> <laughs> about weeks or months that that's just uh, just don't 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 stress it for now we'll we'll get to it when we come to it yeah that's that's a that'll be a funny story for down the road but for our <laughs> listeners 
the inside joke there is that when I did the interview with Nathan McCree, the composer for Tomb Raider, I screwed up the time zones and almost botched the entire interview, which would have haunted me for the rest of my life. So I'm glad it didn't, but now the crew just will never... I mean, you really just... You really just told the story in the most succinct way possible. You don't really need to ever tell it again. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, you know, I just, I like to blab on, blah, blah, blah. Go the podcast. <laughs> no denying I'm that. This is succinct when you have two hours to fill. Um, anyways, uh, it's, it's going to be an insane show today for our one-year anniversary spectacular. We have a plethora of amazing questions from the Sword Chomp community. Um, mostly the Sword Chomp Instagram page, and we will answer every single one of them. Uh, as far as game tacos, I know we have some game new... tacos. <laughs> as, as far as game tacos, we have uh, that new No Man's Still Sky sounds like game too. tacos. <laughs> no, it does not. God. All, all I can hear is tacos now. All right. I want yeah, tacos. seriously. Game tacos, fine. I'll submit to that. Game <laughs> there tacos. we go. Game, <laughs> game tacos. That is weird. As far as game talk is concerned, there we go. Um, Jesus fucking Christ, you have to off already. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have the name for the next show, the anniversary <laughs> show. <laughs> there we go. Game tacos. I, I love how we find those show names. It's they're brilliant. Um, I know that a lot of people. Have, I've actually had some people complain, like I find your show titles misleading and confusing, and I'm like, I'm sorry. It's just part of who we are. I will never change. That's like when bit people bitch about band names, like Panic at the Disco's ridiculous names, or like back in the day, you know, when they that don't was the even cool play thing disco. The emo. It... Oh, those long screamo names, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's pretty much yeah. us in a nutshell. You know, it's it's true. It's it stands out. If you have, to, it'll take you five minutes of reading the description to realize what the show is actually about. And that's what we want to do. <laughs> just just uh, make it a little more fun for you. And also, you know, you guys do a great job of writing all those descriptions as well. But anyways, uh, what remains of Edith, uh, Edith Finch? Is that how it's uh, properly pronounced, Josh? Yes. Uh, something Josh played. He's going to talk to us a little bit about that, of course. As I mentioned, No Man's Sky, much to the chagrin of Shay Layton. Um, I have to celebrate our one-year anniversary by torturing Shay on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's only fitting. Um, uh, I have, have a silly version circle, of the podcast. Yes, full circle. I have a silly version of the podcasting newlywed game that we all have to play. So I hope it turns out to be as ridiculous and fun as it sounds, including some quotes that I have dug up from old episodes that you guys have said that I want to read back to you and see if you remember. Uh, and it took me a long time to dig out those quotes, I'll tell you what. Um and of course, it wouldn't be a Chompcast without some interesting topics to dissect. The main topics on display here are, well, two topics today. One, now that we've had more time to reflect on our favorite games of last year, has our opinion on those games changed or evolved? Because much like you know, everyone else out there, as time goes on, uh, we reflect on those games and how much we love them. And like, do we care more about them now? Do we have less reverence for them as time is going on? Things like that. And uh, the second topic is how has doing the podcast changed our approach to gaming? So, all right, I'm sorry. I know there's a mouthful. That's a huge show intro, and I appreciate you guys' patience. But um, it's because we have one of our biggest and most exciting shows yeah. of the year planned. So, well, that and we heard be... there'd be tacos. So, I can wait. <laughs> that's why. That's really why you're here. Mm, mm-hmm. Delicious tacos. Mm. So yeah, it's it's gonna be a good time. Um, I think we should start off with that one. The the main one is so okay. So me and Fish were talking about this the other day, and it was just by pure coincidence. He was like, "I just want to run my topic by you and see how you feel about it." Uh, I was like, "All right." So he was like, "Well, I was talking. I was thinking about you know last year we did our games of the year, and I was kind of reflecting on those and like if we've changed our opinion on them over time." And I was like, "Fish, that is literally my exact topic. I." I played a game recently that made me reevaluate those things or at least want to have the conversation about it. We had the same topic, so let's just let's do it. That's a great topic, um, and it's fun to think about. So I'd like to start off with that one with you guys. And um, for this reason mostly, our games of the year are stamped in history. We can't change it. It can't happen. It's internally etched in the stone halls of the Chomcast lore forever. Okay? But... That doesn't mean our opinions over time can't change. 
It doesn't mean that things happen with games that make them better or worse. It's just a fun discussion to have, you know? Take, take for example, No Man's Sky, which I'm not going to talk about yet, but it's a game that has come quite a long way since it was released last year. An opinion on it seems to be changing in a positive way. So, in reflection, I want to know how you guys feel about maybe a game or two on your list, whether it's Risen or Fallen. Um, Fish, let's start with you, because you were kind of thinking about the topic. Is there a game in particular that kind of brought this topic to light with you or what uh actually yeah um i've noticed like this past year playing video games that i'm more drawn to the games that i call are more of a comfort to me like the grindy type of games so like i'd be falling back to diablo 3 i can't put it down or final fantasy brave exvius or destiny and those games all require a lot of you know time out of you and I was thinking about, I was like, man, I really like playing those games, but there's other games out there like Inside where it was just a short, very succinct type of game where it, the story was far more profound and mm -hmm. was able to get as much enjoyment out of that in the four hours instead of, you know, spending an evening just grinding away for loot in Diablo. And uh, I kind of realized, like, those those experiences are just equally as valuable to me and I started thinking about the one game that I played last year we had one um one uh what's the word I'm looking for uh we had essentially we had a game that we played um that year but had not came out that year if you guys remember that oh, one um are you being yeah. more specific? Why are you being so vague about this? <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, is like I, I chose um, Bloodborne. And oh yeah, it was your favorite I, I, game from 2016 that wasn't released in 2016. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it uh, that that game was fun and everything. But I started thinking about it. I was like, well, I played Journey, and that game is so short, but had such a profound feeling uh, that it left inside of me once I was done with it within that hour. That um, uh, I, I put that right alongside, you know, the 30, 40 plus hours that I put into Bloodborne and it just got me thinking. I was like, man, I really wish I just had picked Journey instead of Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. That wasn't even one of your favorite games of the year. That Well, it was like a, a topical thing that we did, um, mm -hmm. but still interesting. So you had wished that you had given more accolades to Journey for like the emotional resonance it left with you. Yep. Hmm. That's fair. Um, that actually kind of inspired what I what I was thinking as well, Fish, because I ended up playing Abzu again, um, much to Josh's uh, <laughs> sadness. I, I so I had my daughter had one of her friends over, and I hadn't played Abzu in a long time, even though you guys know I loved it last year. And she was like, just wanted to show her friend this this swimming game, so she put it in, and he started playing it, and he was really entranced by it. So I was just kind of you know there with my daughter. Um, my new newborn and i was like well i got nothing else to do i'll just sit here and you know, kind of watch these kids play this game and kind of help them along and we ended up sitting there and running through the entire game in like three hours or something like that and it just had a profound impact on me again like just the beauty of that game and the different themes the fact that there's a great white shark that's a main character like it just really connected me with me in a powerful way and i put a video up on uh, instagram um Yes, Josh, a great white shark that was an incredible character, okay? Ha. <laughs> huh. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, th I just got me thinking about it. I was like, I wish I had honored Abzu more. I, I, I should have left Doom off my list, I think. Uh, and this is why. I think Doom is a great game. I didn't finish it, and I fell into the trap of, like, I was like two hours away from finishing it or something. And I finished Abzu, and when I thought about my list, I finished every game on there, right? But I was like, why did I put Doom ahead of Abzu? And I think it was just because of, like, a pressure I felt to, like, follow along with a little bit. I'm really good at fighting that, but to give that game more credit than I felt like it deserved. Um, at least for me, as great as Doom was, Abzu was something that I finished... And